that nobody calls me for a cup of tea, man. I said, no, I tell you why. No, they're good people. Wallah, they're good people. They're good human beings, like any other community. But at the back of the mind, they are color conscious. Everything is color, color, color. We are divided by color. The Indian, the African, the colored, the white. Color, 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 apartheid, keeping people apart. So now, I give them a heavenly treatment. But at the back of the mind, see if I call this fellow, if he comes along with his wife and children, you know, with the, that long dress and that hijab, what you call that, shalwar, and that dupatta, and you know, looking for the house, and people are watching, he says, where is this going? <laughs> and you know, knock at the door, and the woman of the house, she opens the door, oh, come in, Mr. Didad, come in. People are watching, so what's going on here? And five minutes goes by, half an hour goes by, he says, but this Mrs. Smith, you know, is she running a shibi, you know, for the illegal liquor or something she's selling? Shh. All this, the fear at the back of the mind, subconsciously is there. So the guy says, no, just say, can we my regards to the missus? He says, thank you very much, sir. No, this is what laws do. Laws have a tendency to change characters of people over a period of time. Anybody, everybody, we all get brainwashed. So the Jews got brainwashed. Eye for an eye, put for a tooth. Eye for an eye, put for a tooth. They forgot forgiveness. So Jesus Christ, another spiritual physician among the Jews, he's a spiritual physician. He sees the sickness of his people. So he gives them a remedy. He says, it has been said by them of old time, the prophets of old, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, is this not evil? He who strikes you on the right cheek, give him the other. This is an antidote, a remedy for a sickness. He says, if a man walks, makes you to walk, he says, agree with thine adversary quickly, while thou art with him on the way, before he takes you before the magistrate and makes you to part with your last father. He says, if a man takes away your coat, give him your cloak also. If a man makes you to walk one mile, walk with him two. I said, you good Christians, Britishers, you should have welcomed Hitler. Look, that guy wanted this little island, that's all. Hmm? You should say, welcome. Look, that's what Jesus said. If a man wants to take your coat, give him your cloak also. He says, look, my empire as well. India is for you. Australia is for you. South Africa is for you. What is this little Britain? That's what you ought to have done. But no, he said, you fought back. This is Islam. In church, you said, we'll fight them on the beaches. We'll fight them on the seashore. And we'll fight them with broomsticks. I said, I admire you for that. This is Islam teaching you that. Jesus told you to turn the other cheek. Give your, if the man takes your coat, give him your cloak, your trousers also. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. But you didn't follow Jesus, you followed the Muslim, Islam. Islam says you must fight back, you must resist every oppressor. So, that is only suitable for the needs of the Jew. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gives us a perfect example for every situation. The Quran says, Lakat kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana. So most certainly in the apostle of Allah, you have the best exemplar. In every aspect of human life. Where do you find this? In Surah Ahzab. Where do you find Ahzab? In the index. Ahzab. And the A, Ahzab. It tells you chapter 33. Ayah number 21, easy to find. Check it up. You owe it to yourself. Check it up. <coughs> Greatness. We are not trying to be little one or the other. But Jesus Christ, he gave us a standard. He has given us a standard. You see, he says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, Matthew 11, 11, he speaks about John the Baptist. John the Baptist, we call him Yahya alayhi salam. See, the Jews were expecting that before the coming of the Messiah, Masih translated Christ, Elias must come first. A prophet called Elias is supposed to have gone up into heaven, bodied before Jesus. And they believed that he was going to come back before the coming of the Messiah, the Christ. So when Jesus claimed that he is the Christ, the Masih, the Messiah, they asked him, where is Elias? So Jesus points out to John the Baptist, that John the Baptist is Elias or in the spirit of Elias. And he testifies about John, Yahya alayhi salam. John, the disciple, the people who wrote, supposed to have written the Gospel of St. John, you're not talking about that. John was a common name, like Tom, Dick, and Harry. You're not talking about that. I'm only talking about 
Yahya alayhi salam, John the Baptist. So Jesus speaks about him and he says, among those born of women, everybody is born of woman. A woman carries every human child. Among those born of women, there has not risen another greater than John the Baptist. The greatest prophets of, among Israelis, Israelis, among the Jews, was Yahya alayhi salam. That's what he said. But he says, he is greater than John. For the works, the works the Father has given me to accomplish. I mean, Allah Baritala has given me greater responsibility. The responsibility of John was to prepare the way for Jesus. That makes him great. But now the responsibilities of Jesus are far greater. So the greater the responsibility, the greater the honor, the greater the status. So he says he is greater than John because of the work that the Father, means God Almighty, has given me to accomplish. So the works tells you your status. What work are you doing? Sweeper? Uh, you have your position. What are you? Foreman? Mm -hmm. You have your position. You are a manager? You have your position. You are a director? You have your position. Everyone has his position according to his responsibility. So the greater the responsibility, the greater the honor. Natural. The responsibility of Jesus was to reform the Jews. That's all. Reform the Jews. Take them out of the, out of the formalism, the ceremonialism, the hypocrisies. That's his job. To bring the Jews to the right path. That's his job. That makes him so great about John. Now the responsibility Allah gives the Holy Prophet Muhammad is to guide the whole of mankind in every aspect of human life. And Jesus Christ prophesied about this mighty messenger of God. He told his people in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. You haven't got that capacity. I want to tell you a lot of things. Like the little child here. These are little children. Suppose I met them alone. What, what can I tell them? I will tell them a few stories, small stories, according to the capacity. I might have, I have a lot of things to tell people, to give, but I can't. I need the right type of people, mature people, who will understand what I'm talking about before I can open my mouth. So Jesus Christ is telling his disciples, you cannot bear them now. It means you haven't got that capacity. And the truth of that statement is written large throughout the Bible, throughout the Bible. Again and again, Jesus Christ tells his disciples, he said, ye of little faith, ye of little faith, ye of little faith, how many times? Again and again. And he explains to them as it is explained to little children, and they can't understand. 